Hey guys, Private Jack here. Okay, what we're going to do in this tutorial is break it down into multi segments. What we're going to talk about and try to demonstrate is how to repair some of the VTFs that are broken in Source Filmmaker. Things like the Robomedic Archimedes, the Voodoo Juju hat, and what we're going to do is we're going to try and repair these so that they display properly and are paintable in Source Filmmaker. So the first, this being the first um, in the series, what we're going to talk about are the various programs that you require to fix these things up. So with that we're going to start. Of course the first thing you're going to need is Source Filmmaker. Now to get Source Filmmaker you've got one of two places that you can go for it. You can either go to the Source Store and up here type Source Filmmaker or SFM and it will take you to the Source Filmmaker link and you can download it and install it from here simply by clicking on this free button. If this doesn't install for you properly, the other place you can go for it is by opening up the browser and pointing it to www.sourcefilmmaker.com. And right here, this green button here is Install SFM, and it, it's a free program. You can click that button, and it will take you through the various steps that you need to install it. Once you have Source Filmmaker installed, uh, the next program that you may require, if you haven't got any of the assets loaded yet, is GCF Scape. What GCF Scape is, is a program that will actually look into the game cache files or the uh, game source files and allow you to extract resources from them. For example, now that Source uh, that Team Fortress 2 has moved to Pipeline, they've changed the delivery uh, system for the game, and it's no longer located in your Source um, Source Apps folder. It's located in uh, the Steam Apps Common folder and it's now delivered instead of in a GCF format it's delivered in a VPK format. I'm just going to open this up here and people are saying well where is it and I'm going to show you right now. So at one time it used to come down in what was known as a game cache file and if you open the game cache file in GCF scape it gave you the ability to go into the game and download the various assets that uh, were required for the game. Uh, this happens to be uh, the Bloody Good Time client, which is not going to show me what I need to see. I need to go into the common folder here. And if I open up, here's all my maps, materials, models, particles, and sounds that I would extract into Source Filmmaker. Uh, in order to gain their assets. Well, TF2 has changed and is now following the same format as Dota 2, Portal 2, and a couple of other games that Source Filmmaker put, or that uh, Valve puts out. And it's no longer located here in the game cache files. You can look all you want, you'll, you won't find it. I happen to have it here because I had an old copy floating on another computer and I can still get at it this way. But now it's located in the Commons folder under Steam Apps Common. If you scroll down here and find Team Fortress 2, this is now where it lives. And open up the TF folder and you're going to find various VPK files. These are the new format for the game cache files. And the, uh, the VPK file that you're looking for is the one that's marked 
underscore DIRVPK. That is the first file in the series of files that go with it. So in this case, the TF2 MIST DIR controls all the assets located in the MIS 000 through MIS 008 VPK. If I double click on the VPK, it will now open uh, the resources for it located in that particular uh, VPK file and I can extract them using GCF Scape. The next program you're going to require is a image editing program. Uh, something like GIMP or Photoshop and I do believe that paint.net is still out there somewhere. Uh, they are all pretty good uh, programs for actually editing the VTF files. Um, the files that we're looking at have multiple layers and we have to be able to access all the layers of the VTF in order to do the edits that we need to do to fix them. Now GIMP is located if you go into a browser and type GIMP. Um, this is a free program. It is almost on the same level, if not meets the same level as Photoshop. And because it's open source, it, like I say, it's free. Go to GIMP, go to Downloads, and download the most current version. Right here in this particular case, at this particular time of the video, it's 2.8.4. Download the installer so that you can just double click on the installer and it will load the program for you. Uh, I've already downloaded it. This is the installer. I've already installed it and what I've done is I've pulled a shortcut up onto my desktop so that I can access it quickly. For Photoshop, uh, GIMP and for Paint.net there is an actual add-on or plug-in for those programs that will allow you to manipulate the VTF files directly so that you don't have to export them using VTF edit and then try to load the things up into the editing program. Uh, if you download the um, plug-in, you can actually edit the VTF directly. So in order to find those, what I did is I went into the browser and I typed in, uh, I'm using GIMP right now, GIMP VTF plugin, and it takes me to the developer website page where I can actually find the plugin for GIMP to work with VTF files. Also within the developer uh, website if you type in Photoshop, if I can spell it right, here's the Photoshop plugin right here and if you're using paint.net actually coming to this particular page it gives you all three of them I believe yes Photoshop uh, the VTF edit program if you want to go and grab that GIMP plugin paint.net plugin and a link to uh, the 3DS Max plugin for version 6 through 2009. Okay, once you click on one of those links, and I'm going to take you to the GIMP one, it will open up the page, and for GIMP, I'm using a 64-bit machine, therefore I would grab the x64 uh, version or 
If I were using a 32-bit machine, I would grab the x86 format for this machine. And as of this particular video, the current plug-in is 1.2.1. Next thing you're going to require is a text editor and the text editor of choice is Notepad++. The reason why is that this is an actual programmer's uh, text editor. It brings things up in correct format if you were to use the Microsoft uh, Notepad. It may not bring the text up in the proper format and it ends up all garbled up and not usable. So, current version for Notepad++ is 6.3.3. .3. Again, using the browser. Typing in Notepad++, go to the download page. And right here grab the installer and bring it down to your desktop. Also over here, I believe if you click this link, it'll take you to, what will it take you to? Maybe nothing. But if you click this, this link, not the download, but this link, it will actually download the installer for you. Once you have uh, the next thing you might want to grab is VTF Edit, and the current version for VTF Edit is 1.33. Again, in the browser, VTF Edit. Not 1.25, but 1.33. Grab the installer and download it to your desktop. Once you have them all down, what you do is you click the installers. It will install the program. For the GIMP um, VTF plugin, open up the RAR file or the zip file. And what you're going to do is you're going to move these two files into. Uh, where are you? Notepad. into your notepad plugins um, folder notepad plugins folder always read the readme uh, gimp oh sorry not notepad gimp in your gimp folder <laughs> so I'm gonna go to gimp 2 I'm gonna open up the lib I'm gonna open up uh, GIMP 2.0 plugins and I'm going to extract these two files into this folder. Just like this. Now I've already got it installed, but I'll replace them anyway. And that's how fast it goes. Continue, continue, and done. So with that, I'm going to kill off this particular part of the tutorial series. And next one will open up. Uh, probably the Robo Archimedes and get that one fixed so that it's no longer black. And then we'll look for some other ones that we can fix at the same time. So with that, I say Private Jack out.